This is the Sabbath School lesson for the first quarter, 2022. Welcome to Lesson 7, Jesus, the Anchor of the Soul, ready for teaching on February 12. It's from the series In These Last Days, The Message of Hebrews, authored by Dr. Felix Cortez, Associate Professor of New Testament Literature in the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University. And I'm your reader for today, Dr. Percy Harold. Thursday, February 10. Jesus, the anchor of the soul. Paul culminates his warning against apostasy and encouragement toward love and faith with a beautiful, soaring exposition of assurance in Christ. Read Hebrews chapter 6, verses 17 to 20. How did God guarantee his promises to us? Hebrews 6, beginning at verse 17. Thus God, determined to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus. Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. God guaranteed his promises for us in several ways. First, God guaranteed his promise with an oath, we read in verse 17. According to scripture, God's oaths to Abraham and David became the ultimate basis of confidence in God's permanent favour toward Israel. When Moses sought to secure God's forgiveness for Israel after the apostasy with the golden calf, he referred to God's oath to Abraham, as we read in Exodus 32, verses 11 to 14. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak and say he brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your descendants, to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of I give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever." So the Lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people. And let's go back to Genesis 22, verses 16 to 18, to the original story. And said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants, as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. The implied strength of his plea was that God's oath was irrevocable, as we read in Romans 9, 4, who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God and the promises, and Romans eleven twenty eight and 29. Concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Similarly, when the psalmist interceded before God for Israel, he claimed God's oath to David. God had said in Psalm 89, verses 34 to 37, I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. Once for all I have sworn by my holiness. I will not lie to David. His offspring shall endure forever, his throne as long as the sun before me. Like the moon it shall be established forever, a faithful witness in the skies. According to the New Testament, both oaths were fulfilled in Jesus, the seed of Abraham, who ascended and was seated on the throne of David, as we read in Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 to 16. 
So beginning at verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. And Luke 1, verses 31 to 33, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. And Luke chapter 1 verses 54 to 55. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to Abraham and to his seed forever. Second, God has guaranteed his promises to us by the act of seating Jesus at his right hand. Jesus' ascension has the purpose of corroborating the promise made to the believers because Jesus ascended as a forerunner on our behalf, we read in Hebrews 6.20. Thus, the ascension reveals to us the certainty of God's salvation for us. God led Jesus to glory through the suffering of death for everyone, so that he might bring many children to glory, we read in Hebrews 2, 9 and 10. Jesus' presence before the Father is the anchor of the soul, we read in Hebrews 6, verse 19, which has been fastened to the throne of God. The honour of God's rule has been waged on the fulfilment of his promise to us through Jesus. What more assurance do we need? And so to finish today, what do you feel when you think about the fact that God has made an oath to you? Why should that thought alone help give you assurance of salvation, even when you feel unworthy? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind, and It Is Written. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. Remember, God is always faithful.